Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Emmanuel. They was all over the world. I say good morning to you. Morning to your life, to your business, your careers, your family. Good morning. Hallelujah. The Lord asked me to come to your midst. And uh, also to share with you some of the present challenges that's everywhere. It's everywhere. Where can we go from these challenges? I can hear you. <laughs> it's, it's epidemic. I don't know where you can go from these challenges. Even if you go on that ground, the challenge is there. If you decided to go inside the sea, you'll find challenges there. Air, oh my God, you see clouds cover you. Everywhere is challenges. You choose to go inside the bush, you see challenges there. I want to say it is the season the season of challenges, and uh, how this challenge relates to our Christian life. Your challenge could be this, could be that, could be that. You know the kind of challenge you have. There is no one without challenges. Yes. I mean, there is no one without limitation. OK? So everyone, 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 just everyone, it is impossible to live without challenges. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. It is impossible to live without challenges. Where can you go from this? So how does this, your challenge relate to your Christian life? Does it mean you're not a Christian, or what does this mean? Having challenges, the type of challenges you have is not the type of challenge I have. The area you have challenges is not the area I have mine. When we talk of challenges, knowledge is not the key, obedience is. When we talk of what? Knowledge is not the key. Because you apply knowledge, that cannot work. Knowledge is not the key, but obedience is. Challenge determine where you are spiritually. Viva, are you there? Mm, yes. Listen to me. Challenge determine where you are spiritually. This is why knowledge is not the key. Obedience is. What do I mean? Challenges reveal the true condition of man's heart. When you see someone who is very quiet, to, I, I, this reminds me of one, one of my evangelists. When he first came to join us, people say, this man is very quiet. Indeed, very quiet, smile. People say, oh, this is nice. Everybody wants to rally around him. I say, wow. No, no, it's too early. Let's post challenges and see whether he will remain the same. OK, go and accuse him wrongly. Just any accusation. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You stole my money. You stole my money. You mean I stole your money? What are you saying? I say, you stole my money. I saw you. I'm going to report you to man of God. Two of them rush to my office. And I know what they are talking about because we started it. 
I said, okay, okay, let you people to come. The gentleman was just coming. Immediately, the face changed. A gentleman that said, it's too gentle, very nice, changed, becoming why? And said to me, I swear in the name of Jesus. I said, no, don't swear. Don't use the name of Jesus to swear. But they say you are very quiet, you are very nice. I, I, I no, no, I'm nice, but I, I can't just allow somebody to lie against me. This is stupid. You lady, you are an idiot. I said, can you see someone you say is very quiet and gentle? I said to them, I said, look, there's nothing like you stolen money. Everyone say you are very quiet and gentle and you are the Messiah. And I said to them, they should post challenge to you and see whether you remain the Messiah. Can you see now that you are not gentle, you are pretending? Challenging determine where you are spiritually. Reveal the true condition of man's heart. So let me take you to the book of um, Hebrew 5. I will take my reading from verse 1, and later we can go to the proof test. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifice for sin. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifice for his own sin, as well as for the sin of the people. Let me take you to verse 7 and 8. During the day of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petition with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death the one who could save him from the dead with crying and what? Tear. Jesus was heard because of his reverent submission. Verse 8. Son, though he was learned forbidden from what he suffered from. Son, that is, though Jesus was a son of God. He learned obedience by the thing he suffered. He went through agony, anguish, physical pain. The Bible says, Reverend submission, that is, he submitted to the revealing word of God. Jesus submitted to the revealing word. This means spiritual growth is a function of obedience to the will of God. And this will take us to the title Knowledge is not the key, obedience is. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus suffered for us in the flesh. He suffers for us in the flesh. If Jesus suffered for all in the flesh, we should arm ourselves with the same manner, the same attitude, the same mind. The Bible says, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. 
He who has suffered from the flesh has ceased from what? From sin. That is, stop sinning. This has learned obedience by the thing he suffered. We learn obedience by the difficult challenges we face today. Tell your neighbor, learn obedience by the difficulty you face today. I can hear you. I can hear you. What are the difficulties you are facing? Those challenges. Our situation are tests to mature us. Tell your neighbor, my situation are tests to mature me. I can hear you. My challenges are tests to mature me. What is your challenges? What is your situation? That is a question you need to ask yourself. What is your challenge? What is your situation as a Christian? They are tests to mature you. Whatever situation you are facing, don't allow them to control you. When your situation control you, you will lose all sense of reasoning. This is what has happened today. Everyone that is better than you, they are criminals. They are corrupt people. They are thieves. When you don't have vehicle and you are going on the way, you see a posh car. Ah, they are criminals. They are the ones who carry our money. Because we have lost sense of war, reasoning. When the poverty come and you allow the poverty to control you, hardship to control you, those who are better than you in terms of money, in terms of wealth, they are your enemy. When you allow your depression to control you, those who are happy, they are your enemy. When you allow your sickness to control you, those who are not sick, they are your enemy. When they laugh, you feel irritated. And when you are not sick and you are healthy, if you allow your good health to control you as well, those who are sick, you will think as a result of their sin come sickness. The Timothy 3 verse 7, which says, we are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You see today, sin is lay highs where there is no heat of trial and temptation. Where there is no heat of challenges, sin is lay highs. Just as impurity highs in gold until it goes into process, you know, gold, Impurity on that goal must be removed before it becomes gold. So in the same way, sin, iniquity, is lay highs. Where there is no heat of challenges, trial, temptation, trouble. In time of prosperity and success, you see the evil one rejoicing and rejoicing but when the heat of trial and temptation come, their evil action surface. No matter how much you master the scripture, the Bible, which many of us are using today as a cover up, we hide on that knowledge of the Bible to deceive the world that you are a deist, you are a Christian, you are a bishop, you are a prophet, you are an archibald, whatever name you call yourself. We are hiding under the knowledge of the Bible. And knowledge is not the key obedience is. No matter how much you master the scripture, without true obedience to what you read, 
you still wear spiritual dampers. We continue to learn and we come to church from far and wide to hear this message of God and many of us live with Imane TV. We live with what? Yes, that is, as I'm talking now, some of us, we own it in our bedroom. Our children, they own it, own it, put it on all the time. We live with it. Yet, we never mature because of disobedience. Knowledge is not the key obedience is. Tell your neighbor, we continue learning, coming to church from far and wide, hear message of gospel, yet we never mature because of disobedience. Maturity is all about Christ. When you are not mature, you are ignorant. And ignorance is a sin. When you are not mature, you react intellectually to the things of God. You react by what you see, and you think it's godly way to do that. You react by what you hear. Eh, eh, you say this to me, you mean my wife, my wife, my wife did this? You saw my wife there? Yes, I saw your wife there. And you will not know that he want to scatter your marriage. It's easy to destroy those who are not mature. If you are not mature, you are just a fool to Satan. Anytime they see you happy, they will go into a corner and make a phone call to you that uh -huh, this man is happy. Let him give him unhappiness. They will now give you a phone call. Hello? Yes. You see? I saw your wife. The place I saw your wife is very, very bad. I'm telling you. You know, <laughs> it's bad though. Eh? Where? This place, that place, that place. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You drop the phone and you say, oh, I love this woman. I love her. I don't know why you should be him like this to me. You want to commit suicide. Those who have committed suicide, 50% of them, they act ignorantly. What they hear, what they see, what their circumstances look like. So these are the weapons for immature Christian. Take note of this word and take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, and uh, work on it. Your challenge determine where you are spiritually. Your challenge could be sickness, could be poverty, could be hardship, could be insult, could be temptation, could be just name, trial and temptation determine where we are spiritually. How you react when you are under pressure, how you react when you are under that challenge, you will see the way you react. is how the real you reacts. Is how the real you react. Say how I react. Under pressure. I mean under challenge. I mean under your problem. I don't know the condition you are. How you react. Maybe hardship or sickness or depth or hardship. How you react is how the real you reacts. And the real you is the one serving God, not you. You are here today because you have transport to come to the church. Or you are able to fuel your car. 
Assume you have no money to fuel your car. You will likely send your children to the church and sit at home because you don't want to be shamed by people around you. And you have forgotten that the same God that gave you the vehicle, that gave you the car, you were nobody before. And the Lord now gave you the vehicle, and you are now using the same vehicle against him. By looking at the way people down, you know who is this man. Whether he's coming to give testimony or he's coming with trouble. You see some dance, they will do like this. Why some dance? We say, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know that uh, Satan has hit him. <laughs> Trial and temptation determine where you are spiritually. How you react under pressure, how you react under your situation, is how the real you reacts. Let me believe today's message bless your soul. Knowledge is not the key, obedience is. You just need to take your time, meditate on it. Meditation brings revelation. Where there is no vision, people perish. My dear viewers, let us pray. Whatever medium you are using to view us, Jesus knows. Dear viewers all over the world, devil wants us to curse Jesus. Why on that situation? Devil wants us to curse Jesus. Why on that pain, affliction, poverty? Our situation, our test to mature us. Don't allow any situation to control you. Don't allow any situation to mislead you or overwhelm you. Stay and cope with hard and good moments. Viewers, listen. Stay and cope with hard and good moments. A person can be sick in body and yet be a Christian and yet be a friend of God and yet be a favorite of Jesus. Don't mention your Christian lie by your situation. Don't allow your situation to mislead you. I want to pray with you, viewers all over the world. Whatever situation you are in, in the name of Jesus, I release you. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are passing through right now, be released in the name of Jesus. Whatever situation you are going through in your life, be released in the name of Jesus. You situation, I say, go. Leave my people. Leave their business. Leave their career. In the name of Jesus, I can see you being released. Where there is no vision, people perish. I can hear breakthrough, breakthrough in your way, in your head, in your career, in your destiny. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for their breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus, for their breakthrough in Jesus Christ's name. They was all over the world. I will know before you that you are free. I say to you, you are free in the name of Jesus. I can see you being set free. Whatever situation in your head, any area of your organ that is not functional, be it your kidney, be it your liver, be it your blood, your fluid, your bone. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. You are restored. You are restored. You are restored. I can see you being restored. It's a vision. I can see you being restored. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
those of you that are under the influence of my voice, you believe Jesus is Lord, healer, deliverer, savior. I say to you, this is your testimony. Testimony of your health. This is your testimony. Testimony of your finances. This is your testimony. Testimony of your breakthrough. This is your testimony. Testimony of your restoration. Yes, I can hear breakthrough once again. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. I rejoice with you. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen, amen, amen. Oh